scary Whippo can be with Counterpick. And in game number one here, FlyQuest are starting out on red side. They could save Counterpick for Whippo. Red side top, we just saw Broken Blade uh, in Europe a couple of games uh, playing on this champ and how annoying it can be with the mobility, with the healing. And it's also interesting, you know, knowing that Bupo has all these different picks that he's cooking up. They're on red side, right? So they have that fifth pick counter pick. You know, what is he going to go for? What is Fudge going to play? When Fudge was casting with us last week, he was talking about you know, the difficulties and how being on red side is often good against Whippo just to get a normal matchup, not even yeah. necessarily to get a big counter pick, but just to make sure that he's not doing anything too crazy. So I'm really curious, you know, is there something that's really been cooked up for this game one? You, you talked about the rec side, obviously that's banned out, but Whippo has a lot of picks he could go to. Certainly does. Olaf was one of the super big ones where he was able to actually 1v9. But this draft is already pretty interesting. One of the biggest changes for Cloud9 in playoffs was that the entire team was playing better than they did in the regular season, but especially to me, the bottom lane yeah. played so much better to much more your expectations of Berserker especially. Mm -hmm. And now they're slamming the Callista Renata, which is one of the most aggro bottom lanes there are. So definitely expect uh, Blabber to pay some attention there. I mean, their Lucian Nami game was night and day from what they were doing in the regular season. The one that they played in playoffs, they dominated. They were able to pull off dives. They were able to really stomp through these lanes yeah. and play towards those advantages. This is a super aggressive lane. They can play that sort of style. They can really look to pound home an advantage, especially with the Tzalea, who can be moving around the map if he gets lane prior. Exactly. We're talking about junglers looking towards bottom lane. Talia loves to be able to find those windows, to make those rotations, get this Callista snowballing early so you can shut down that Senna stack machine before it becomes the absolutely oppressive power that it can evolve into. Renekton will be locked in for FlyQuest, so we're not going to get to see that red side fifth pick top side counter pick instead they're just going to go with pretty much the most basic standard evergreen top laner there can be yes yeah, so this is this is pretty interesting right so you know i'm curious if there is going to be any kind of surprise swap around or something like that from FlyQuest, because otherwise you know what it looks like is you've already locked both your soul laners in the first three on red side we already know that Senna's going to be going bot. You've already seen what the entire bot lane is from Cloud9, so you wouldn't really be getting any sort of a counter pick on red side, which I generally feel like can be somewhat of a failed draft. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe there is potential for things to be swapped around or be a little bit surprising. It could potentially be Karma support, though generally we do see Senna almost exclusively with melee champions these days. Senna and Karma both being on your team does also... <laughs> <laughs> Toby, you're going to enjoy that level. So, for people who don't watch the dive and don't know, this is our dive bet. Yeah. Both Azale and Meteos uh, bet, that, bet that Cloud9 That's were going to win the entire split. Uh, and I bet on... They gave me two. I got FlyQuest. Two for one special. Yeah. <laughs> I got FlyQuest. And I, I got 100 Thieves. That one didn't work out uh, for me as well. So all my coins are on FlyQuest. When we were doing our NACL co-stream during one of the off weeks, you also made some bet about eating a lemon. What is it with you and the lemons? The, I, I had the idea because of the dive one, and we couldn't come oh, up with anything else. He really likes lemons. <laughs> he, just, he secretly just goes home and eats a full lemon every night. He's been training. <laughs> the lemon lover. <laughs> I have never eaten a lemon in my life. That's These what a lemon eaters. eater would yeah, say. That's exactly what it would be. <laughs> we're not falling off flowers. Flowers, I have pets. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out. Good luck out. I'll keep that we in appreciate mind. you. We're covered. We got the we got the we bucket got here. Can, we got Pepto. Yeah. All right. I've got a lemon for Kobe. I got a bottle of Pepto. <laughs> Kobe gets a lemon. Where are these lemon accusations coming <laughs> from? Here? What, what do you get? What do you, we need to find a present for you from yeah. the audience. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to find out. Maybe someone has something for me. Hey, Vi went through. Boys, focus okay. up. Focus all right, up. All right, okay, okay, focus Vi to All right, all right. Twisted Vi to Leo. <laughs> Sejuani, Tom Kench, all banned away. We got Lee Sin for FlyQuest and for Inspired. We got Vi locked in for Blabber. What is the final? Final pick of the draft here for C9. What are we gonna get in the top lane to deal with that lizard? Cool. Is there any chance that this is a Lisa and bot? I feel like if, if someone was gonna cook in this league for support, that it could be Busio. Nah, Blabber's Lee Sin was Blabber's Lee Sin was insane. Inspired Lee Sin's insane. We've had so many cool I Lee Sin. Just, I just wonder, it's game one, you're red side, you're really not gonna cook anything, you're just gonna blind pick both your soul laners yeah, for game, quest? Game one. Game one is, is chill. We saved the cooking till later okay. in the series. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll find out. Fifth pick here. Come Coming through. Could be 
Huey. So it, it's, if yeah, it's Huey, it could be Huey support or Karma support. So yeah. both these uh, could be possible. We'll have to see where it's going to go. Uh, this will be a double range lane with Senna, which isn't common in pro play, but I do really think these are strong in solo queue. Uh, so it is looking like Karma. I wonder if it's going to be a farming Karma. I've seen that with both. I have seen um, Senna Swain is something that's relatively popular online that people will play that and have a farming Swain. So you could do that with Karma. You could just have it be that support as well. I think this is pretty cool. And Huey for Jensen, he's looked good in the couple times that he's brought it out. We also saw uh, it brought out by Insanity a few times, and he yeah. looked really good on it as well. I, I would definitely greatly prefer it to be a farming uh, Karma and a fasting Senna. Me too. Okay. So you can get uh, some nice value out of the souls there. And Karma just does so well with money now, uh, with the changes. So, I, you know, I really want to see the malignants on it. I really want to see Busio getting some, uh, some, some spotlight time because... He got first team all pro yep. here. Uh, very impressive for such a young player in the LCS. And of course, his history being a mid laner before and then transferring down to uh, support in the bottom lane. You kind of want to see him. Your support. Yeah, you kind of want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. see him on like AP carries, you know, and, and, and them actually going with the farming style. So how do you guys want to see FlyQuest play this game out because Cloud9 got that Vi Talia combo that's so powerful with mid jungle. They got to have the Callista Renata super aggro bot lane, and we already discussed how FlyQuest isn't getting a counter pick with the red side round five pick. How Senna doesn't normally pair with a pick like Karma. So what's the trick here? How do you navigate this? So I will say, you know, they did flex the Karma to bot, so they did get answering that pick, you know, with, with the, the pick of your mid lane for Jensen. But I think a lot of it for Inspired is just about answering where the plays are going to be. And I think this is a style that he's really, really strong at. He wants to answer where Blabber is going to go. They want to look to scale. Way Senna Karma, really powerful as far as their scaling. And I think they're going to look to fight around these objectives. Lots of shielding, lots of early game power here for them. Um, so I think it's going to be about strong lanes, poking them out, and then setting up our own objectives. Yeah, I think the biggest target here is going to be for sure the Vi Talia combo. This combo is the easiest in the game to pull off. Vi guarantees the seismic shove. You have so much burst damage. <laughs> and and Jensen is playing Huey. Uh, <laughs> Jojo with some kind cool. words here. Okay. Everybody's a Yappa now. Yeah, the, the Yap meta has dawned, uh -huh. gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome to the new era Love of LCS. Him. He's taking over. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little APA in all of us. Yeah. But, well, I mean, if you're starting the chatting now, uh, I would say it's probably going to be harder for the way to answer the chat. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, as we were talking about, Lee Sin has been so big so far in playoffs. And, and Inspired certainly has been creative, although they did start with a ward on Raptors that does see Inspired now, so they know that he is starting on Raptors' red side. Well, they're going to go behind yeah. them. This is actually really cheeky. C9 really looking to put that aggro immediately into play. Bottom side, Busio gets chunked a little bit there by Berserker and Vulcan. This is something that I... I'm really happy to see just based on the terrain changes. I remember back when the changes first came in for this season, there was plenty of cheesy clips going around with bottom lanes and junglers doing just that, going around for that surprise pathing. Yeah, I think it's smart, right? You just get instant value out of the Guardian proc as well from Vulcan. He starts mm -hmm. with the E, they get a little bit of chunk. It is going to be Busio that's farming. He's starting with the Doran's Ring, Senna's on support item. So it is going to be that fasting Senna, the farming Karma here. Uh, and just going for what could be, you know, low risk play, but maybe medium reward. Hey, maybe they go up a little bit too far and you get a good chunk and you get an advantage yeah. in that 2v2. Because FlyQuest for their side, it's really about the poke. They don't want to commit to all ins with the Senna Karma. They have to whittle you down, stay high on health, utilizing those Senna Qs for pass through heals and damage. Uh, and really just try to play a little bit more of a slow burn. All right, let's check a, a track inspired right now. Because he did what's become pretty common now is a one quadrant clear into recall for Longsword uh, start on a lot of these AD junglers. So Inspired's coming back out with his first purchase with that extra AD from the Longsword. Gives you the extra advantage and a little bit of a scrap. Well, Inspired clearing through that blue side quadrant now. You can see the same thing being done by Blabber, who is probably going to finish just slightly ahead of him again because he didn't have to go back to complete that first shot. 34 to 35 on the treats. So they're still both around the same point here in terms yep. of their jungle progression. 
I mean, basically, this this clear where you do three camps, base, and get a longsword is only advantageous if you can actually make something happen with the longsword. Otherwise, yeah. you're just doing a slower six camp clear, right? Because Flaver can actually look to base here. But if they do meet up bot or they meet up at a scuttle, you have that extra AD, you have that extra little bit of combat power that potentially can make a difference in these fights. Yeah, exactly. With both of them starting on the same side of the map, I can see how you can predict it as we're going to end up fighting over something. Whether it's a crab, whether it's bottom lane, it's most likely going down that way. But Inspired now pathing back up towards Towards the top side of things as blabber has already secured the bottom river scuttle crab so the long sword doesn't end up getting to make a whole lot of impact just yet inspired yeah he's not going to get anything yeah, I mean, he, he was seen by the minion minions as well yeah. and, and jojo also obviously putting that ward but just trading the scuttles for now uh, what it also does set you up for is if uh, he stays out here for another 50 seconds the void grub early arrival mm. um it's super nice to just be there immediately when void grub spawn yoinking the first one you can instantly take those if you have smite first one is uh immediately toast especially to a lee sin that has execute damage Jojo continuing to put the pressure here on Jensen, shoving him back. Not a whole lot of mana left for the Talia to work with. But this is actually pretty concerning because Jensen already TP'd back and he's that low. Yeah. Jojo hasn't even based, right? So Jojo's going to be able to reset here. If he bases, immediately TPs and can actually lock Jensen into this lane for a little bit longer, it can get concerning for Jensen. So what Jensen's going to try to do is as soon as Jojo bases, he's going to try to actually reset the wave, bounce it, and get a base off himself. Oh, bottom lane, Matsu forced to flash back as Berserker and Vulcan find first blood in the 2v2. Kalista Renata doing what you draft them to do. Ooh, I want to see the very beginning of that because Vulcan looked like he was able to land a nice handshake. Uh, flash answered there as Berserker chased him down and first blood. This Cloud9 bottom oh, lane! Oh my goodness, man! You disrespect them once, all right. You disrespect them twice. This bottom lane's over. They're still back. <laughs> Cloud9 <laughs> in playoffs. All right, JoJo here, uh, fishing around. Looks like it'd just be the control word, though. And they're going to sacrifice the grubs on top side. Of course, Blabber did have the later recall since Inspired went for the early longsword one. So um, there is the Doran's blade difference, which is pretty popular for a lot of AD junglers. Remember? There is going to be a nerf pretty soon where Doran's yeah. Blades will be uh, unique with uh, jungle items and support items, so you won't be able to do this for long. But Blabber grabs one while you still can. And we saw Jensen go back to base to heal up. He arrives oh. back into lane, and he's already in some trouble. Whippo, now nah, he's not going to end up falling for the trap there, getting beat up underneath the turret, so he'll escape. That was actually really close, though, because he, he kind of did. He got knocked under the tower, but Fudge didn't quite have the damage to finish off the cannon, so the turret didn't actually swap aggro over onto the Renekton. So uh, nice little attempt there by Fudge, but doesn't quite have the damage to burst down those minions. Otherwise, I think Whippo could have been in a lot of trouble. Blabber, not six, but he is PTA. He does have the D-Blade. He is really strong early, and this could be trouble for FlyQuest. Masu and Lucio trying to get back underneath the turret. Blabber nicely done with the ball breaker, comboed with the flash to get past Busio and immediately secure another kill on Masu. And before, in order to get into that position, he did a really nice Q over here through uh, around the ward while support just cleared out the ward. Then he waits for his Q cooldown to come back up, then goes for the gank from behind, but mid. Jojo now in trouble as Inspired looks to bring the extra burst to set Jensen up for success. FlyQuest finally received spawn and get their first kill of the game. Yeah, Inspired flashing behind him. Almost almost looked like he thought he had ult there for a second, but I guess he's probably just trying to dodge a spell or something. Either way, nicely done. Are able to get that kill. It's a good vision play that was kind of eerily reminiscent of the one that Blabber made in his last playoff series that you did a breakdown on, Kobe. Uh, really just playing on the edge of vision there. Blabber, though, back down to bot side. This time he's six now, so the ulti is prepped and ready. They know that Lee Sin is on top side, so there is an angle to potentially dive, and FlyQuest is just going to have to evacuate. Yeah, this is so scary, man. The Vi, plus when you have to deal with Renata having a bailout, it just makes the turret so dive hard. so much more powerful because the opportunity to trade is so heavily reduced. C9 up one and a half thousand gold, two kills and three grubs. Yes, FlyQuest got that first Drake, but I feel like if you got to pick which side you want to be on, especially comparing bottom lane, Berserker's plenty out farming his counterpart in the Karma. Yeah. He's already got a 200 gold bounty. This is what C9 fans want to see. And look at that gold in the mid lane. Even with the kill, barely a little bit of a lead there for Jensen. I think the biggest discrepancy is the flash difference, but uh, Jensen is playing into Vi Talia combo, so uh, still very dangerous even with his flash. Blabber just has to be a little bit cognizant. Make sure you don't flash to or ult too close to tower. Jensen brings you into a bad spot. 
Um, but they definitely still can pull off a lot of pressure right now, Blabber with his ultimate ready. And I feel like Cloud9 is going to be really happy about how the top lane is going. You're just playing this tank, Gragas, up there, who's just farming even against Whippo on yeah. the Renekton. It's been very quiet. Gragas scales incredibly well. Uh, Fudge was such a standout in their previous series against 100 Thieves, really was dominant against Sniper, had all these great counter picks, but he's showing, hey, he can play the other side of it, he can play weak side, doesn't need that jungle attention, and as long as you're just chilling and farming up here, you are so happy as the Gragas. I mean, it's kind of going back to what Vulcan was talking about when we heard from him right before the series started, right? When he says, hey, we're expecting mid lane to win, so as long as the sides don't do anything egregious or bad, we're chilling, and so far, bottom lane is absolutely smashing, Fudge is neutralizing, and C9 is invading the FlyQuest jungle, stealing away that blue buff. Yeah, using their big, big push advantage in bottom lane to go for some of these invades. And of course, JoJo's calling, hey, Inspired has no flash still from the flash that he pulled on me in mid lane. So Blabber, come over here. We're going for the invade. You have ult ready. Ooh. Another nice knockback there from Fudge's ulti, but not enough to really threaten anything serious onto Bwipo's Renekt. Yeah, I think, again, it's just basically a sustained play. Uh, this is actually pretty nice for, for Bwipo. Being able to get the plant there kind of bails him out of a bad situation. Doesn't actually have to use his recall just yet and TP back, so he's going to be able to save that. Uh, and Fudge is just looking for these trades. You try to utilize your passive in matchups like this. You just try to constantly chip them down, and it's often your mana bar versus their health bar, which is going to kind of run out first. These trades kind of important now, too. Uh, Never mind. All right, we get the ultimate out of Inspired, but kind of important because second grubs are available right now as mid lane also trading here. So once they got the ult advantage now on cooldown on Inspired, yeah. uh, with Blabber not using his, but at least it Sin Kick being down, got to expect uh, they should be able to go for six grub play here for Cloud9. Could be a pretty big snowball in gold. One thing FlyQuest does have going for him right now is control over the top side. Whippo shoving another wave in, trying to collect the money on the first turret plate. Fudge does not have a lot of resources still to work with, nearly out of mana here, but does have the Unleashed Teleport ready to return to base and bring him back into the fight if it does end up becoming a scrap over these grubs that Blabber is just now starting off. Jensen flashing away from the seismic shove here in mid lane. Yeah. There's that ever important summoner spell we're talking about on this immobile mage. It's all these small wins that are like, yeah, okay, grubs are free, grubs are so free right now there's no kick on Lee Sin now there's no flash on mid uh you know we just had the full health teleport back from Jojo the freest six grubs ever here for Cloud9 and not currently the response of Dragon quite yet honestly if, if Blabber finishes this up pretty quickly they could even retain control down here because Berserker and Vulcan just waiting in this brush guarding the bottom side of the map and you gotta say, six grubs, it feels so good when you can secure those as your jungler and your lanes are already winning, right? Because mid lane has been pushing in constantly, bot lane has been pushing in constantly, top is neutral or getting shoved, but it doesn't really matter because this is gonna help Vulcan, Berserker, Jojo accelerate their game, potentially take even more plates away as FlyQuest gonna start this up on Vision. Blabber's coming out from base, looks like they may be too late to contest, but they are potentially moving around. That bot lane is going in and they're going to TP. Yeah, even if they can't contest the objective, they want to try to find a fight afterwards. Fudge making his way over. Drake still at about 2k. Blabber comes over the wall. They engage immediately right on top of Inspire. They're looking to burst him down and he's already gone. Berserker gets the kill as Jojo flashes back over the wall to stay alive. The hostile takeover hits Masu and Whippo both, but C9 is going to be careful. It's going to be Whippo securing the Drake and FlyQuest is ready to fight. Masu gets the kill credit on Blabber and Fly FlyQuest are not just gonna let C9 run the show. I think Blabber used his smite in the kill. He didn't actually have the smite for the dragon there at all. So they just walk up. I'm not sure if they tracked that or just wanted to take the fight either way, but Whippo just walks up, takes that dragon. A great start for Cloud9, turns bad as FlyQuest punish. Yeah, when you see the Vi still whacking the dragon at like 400 health, 300 health, you're like, oh, he hasn't smited yet. Up, oh, pretty he sure he here? doesn't have it. So the spectator uh, is always, always is always really bugged on the cooldowns yeah. for summoner spells, so it's it's hard to, to trust if, if that or not. But uh, he obviously did not have it when they were hitting dragon. So the chase back here definitely fortunate here for Bwipo oh. to be able to go in and get it. Yeah, that was down to 38, and everyone on Cloud9 kind of stopped hitting it because they realized, okay, FlyQuest is coming in. They're probably expecting Blabber to be able to smite and finish. Uh, but either way, a little bit of an oopsie there from Cloud9. Still up in gold, though. But FlyQuest does have a nice in towards a potential soul here. And it is an ocean soul, uh, which is a really powerful one. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal to not end up having to go even on these early drakes. Jojo getting dove. Nice play from Inspired, kicking him right back into the waiting arms of Busio and Jensen. FlyQuest now 
nearly got this game tied up in kills. It's a pretty close one. It is, and Busio is kind of getting online. He's got his Malignant stun here already. So he's going to be feeling good about that. Eclipse done for Inspired as top lane just going to be scrapping it up. Not too much going to come from that. But Jojo, the target of quite a lot of attention, clearly Inspired wanting to shut him down, has been going mid. He spent a couple flashes already specifically on that mid laner. Yep. Uh, this is nothing new for Jojo. This has been really what we've been seeing over the last couple of years. People are nonstop putting that attention towards him. But I will say it's a little, a little bit atypical for him to die to it this much. He has been getting better and better at actually avoiding it. So FlyQuest mm -hmm. executing well and being able to punish Cloud9 mid laner. All right, let's see what Blabber can uh, respond with here because he's got his Thunder Sky done. He has his ultimate ready mm -hmm. here on the Vi. So they're going to try and force something to start up the Rift Heralds to get some more tower pushing power for themselves. Looks like with the, the later reset for FlyQuest, I think they're just coming out to cover yeah. lanes and there's not going to be any fight over the actual Herald itself. Of course, this objective isn't as big of a deal as it used to be uh, last season, but still quite nice mm -hmm. in being able to push, especially if you do have six grubs, then you get a bunch of void mites if you drive it yep. uh, and you can swarm uh, one of these outer towers, namely mid is usually the most successful choice. And there we go, pop it mid. Exactly, they want to do just that. The charge alone will not kill the turret from this health, but with the wave already built up, with the amount of players that they had present for the push, they can hard force that one down. <laughs> C9, collect the first turret of the game. They look so goofy when there's that many, man. It's just a clown car, all the little grubs <laughs> popping out. Dude, a Rift Herald push with Belveth is now one of the funniest things in League of Legends because it's just so much garbage all over the screen. It looks like you're playing an old RTS. Get a York in there. Yeah. Uh, I just checked. That swarm of Void Mites did 21 damage to the secondary Let's trade. go. <laughs> nice. Good it's job. A, it's about the quality of the damage. Uh -huh. uh -huh. you know? it, looked, it looked really it looked, intimidating. It was, a, it was a cool 21 damage. Oh, yeah. That was, that's, they're going to need that later. <laughs> hey, if that tower just barely dies later to like a single caster minion yeah. auto attack mm -hmm. that was the we're grubs. all gonna remember this moment fly quest are taking over the top side river now though unfortunately for them there's not really a whole lot left here right now cloud nine have controlled everything that spawned inside of that pit so far in these first 15 and a half minutes of gameplay but our next neutral objective will be the third drake the first one of those ocean drakes that'll be spawning this game here in just over 60 seconds cloud nine obviously showed they were already ready to contest the previous one it just got a little bit goofy so i'm expecting us to have another fight over Drake number three. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you want to be giving Fly a free in towards Soul. Uh, that is kind of their major win condition right now. That's going to be what they're looking for. Uh, we're looking across the item completions pretty even across the board. I would say maybe a little bit more power on the Fly Quest side for now, as there's some kind of scaling items, things like Aroa, that need a lot of time to scale up here for Fudge. Good uh, safe play here from JoJo, too. You know, Inspired spent a lot of time waiting around. They've really had a target on JoJo, him plus Jensen. Um, constantly looking for these plays, but no opportunity on the top side before the reset here for Dragon. This is also kind of interesting from Vulcan. So he's going Redemption Rush, which is pretty atypical, but I actually quite like this against Huey because so much AoE in these fights ah. that I really do think it is about answering that. You throw out the E, you shield up a lot of people, you drop that Redemption immediately when that AoE is coming through, and you can kind of potentially reset the fight from what could be a devastating situation. Also, Cloud9 have a lot of utility on their team to be able to force the location of a fight. When you have Vi Ultimate and Renata Ultimate here, you can keep them in place for the duration. Tactical nuke redemption. <laughs> exactly, for the, for the big redemption <laughs> to land. Well, the Drake has spawned and the fight is ready to kick off. Let's see who's actually going to end up engaging here. Blabber jumping back up the wall, looking for a potential wraparound. Yeah, I'm gonna guess Blabber is gonna be the one doing it. Uh, Renata Ultimate here is definitely something FlyQuest also have to be cognizant of. So they're spreading out. They, they cannot group up here. It kind of fills up the river when uh, when you've got a good position there for Vulcan. Like the banana bush control for Cloud9 here. They've got Control Ward yep. in it. Uh, really helps out in their target choice now. And JoJo's going for a mid lane. Oh, he was he was walking towards mid lane, towards that, that minion wave, but they're just going to let the wave crash into tower. He's going to look for an angle, I think, here for the ulti. Try to cut some... Yeah. Oh, nice! He finds Jensen and forces the flash back over the wall. Dawning Shadow to make sure their mid laner stays alive. Comes out for C9. Berserker's already at half HP. Whippo at half now, too. They want to maintain control over the Drake for FlyQuest, but they ain't going to do it. The hostile takeover flies out, and Fudge might just drop the Spiraling Despair. He'll barely hold on as Inspired is trapped back inside the pit, and the Drake's still at 1700 HP. FlyQuest secures the objective, and nobody's dead on either team.
team. Nicely done there by FlyQuest. They found the seismic shove on a Jensen, but Jensen poked out Berserker so much that he couldn't even really enter the fight, even after Redemption and him picking up the Honey Fruit, he was still pretty low. So again, Cloud9 can't find the angle here. And that's three straight dragons for FlyQuest. Cloud9 will get a little bit of gold off the back of this, but you're starting to get nervous if you're on the Cloud9 side. Yeah, you certainly are with the way that that dragon fight went. If the next one also uh, goes the same way, you, you really have a hole to dig yourself out of. I do like that they still, as soon as uh, they didn't have follow-up damage on Inspired and Inspired flashed away from Blabber ulting him uh, and trying to go for that inside the Dragon Pit, then they were like, you know what? We're not getting this Dragon. They back out, too much poke damage. Fudge had already been pushed out to like 50 HP maybe. And so they just run mid to try and at least get a consolation prize, got that secondary turret. C9 up 2,000 gold with Jensen and Inspired up here in the top lane, just allowing Jensen to push out, making it look like, oh man, Hui's just trying to push the side lane. Be a shame if you ganked him. Maybe bait Cloud9 into a play that they aren't quite ready for, but it does not look like C9's interested in that whatsoever. Berserker here still on the Kalista, 3-0 and 1. Most kills of anybody on either team. Blade of the Ruin King completed. This champion has so much outplay opportunity. Especially yeah. when you're up against stuff that's got to land skill shots like the way when you got to try to hit them with a center route or something like that. And Berserker needs to continue playing like playoff Berserker, I think, for C9 to get the dub here. And, and he also needs to rely on some teammates here to be able to hold them in place because Kalista's most scary thing is playing into big range. And when you're outranged by Huey and then Senna's soul starts stacking up and, and there's there's karma cues coming at you, there, there's a lot of range there on FlyQuest, a lot of poke damage that can be really annoying. And we saw the early stages of it in the last fight. So sometimes it can be really annoying for Kalista to actually close that range. But when you do, it just blows open. If you have a good Gragas engage, Vi ultimate, you know, into Talia combos, then it can be very explosive. But if FlyQuest can control it and get the that poke damage down they only need one more dragon um you know one more successful fight here for them to be able to get uh, a lot of control i just think flyquest played so well around that potential engage from cloud nine they were so well spread out there was no one that could actually be two man body slam two man crag assaulted at any point even when blabber went in the rest of the team from flyquest then steps forward and actually zones off the follow-up they're not able to come in and actually do anything off the back of that vial so FlyQuest really positioned well, and I just think limited Cloud9's options. So Berserker didn't even really get the auto attack. He did nothing in that last fight. So he has all the gold, but if you can't get a range, you're not gonna do anything with it. And I like how FlyQuest are playing really safe around these Jensen flash timers. Jensen on the way still has not died, even though enemy team has so much engaged. Uh, and when he does have his cooldown on his flash, they just revert to farming, back to side lanes here. Okay, everybody keep it calm. Uh, but that champion does so much AOE damage, has a lot of range, so it can make it very problematic for, for Cloud9, especially if they wait the cooldown and get his flash back up for the extra safety. Yep, that flash cooldown has about 45 seconds left on it right now, and that next Drake will not be spawning for another 90 or so, and this on, is JoJo. the huge fight that we will be looking forward to. JoJo staying very far at range from this minion wave, just wants to clear it all out. Jensen's just chilling. And Inspired's in that yeah, side, He's bro. still in he there. Doesn't, he doesn't know. JoJo's it, so. never going up there, though. He, he, is, he is avoiding the Inspired camp pretty well. Inspired. Going to be spotted out by that one. So JoJo's instincts are now proven correct from the Cloud9 point of view, as Inspired and Jensen are once again going to retreat back towards that Tier 1 turret. FlyQuest still have not claimed any turrets from C9 so far this game. C9 with the two that they managed to bring down there in the mid lane, but the outer turret's still standing in both those sides. And even though, you know, Renekton had a little bit of extra CS on Fudge, you know, Fudge with the scaling Gragas build, Seraphs has transformed, and Rod of Ages is up to seven stacks. So he is feeling quite good about this. You get a decent amount of AP in this, you get the extra survivability of the shield, so much extra sustain and health here. Um, the, the double scaling items build feels quite nice once you get past 20 uh, something minutes here. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, this 30 HP that was left on Dragon when Wipo actually takes it away, that changes the, the feeling of this game so much. Because yeah. if you have two Dragons to one right now, you're not feeling the pressure. But for Cloud9, this could potentially be a game losing fight if they do, in fact, fail to execute on it. So they are trying to play through mid. They're trying to mix it up a little bit. And it is kind of this 5v5 skirmish to get control of mid and then move down to the river and try to get Pryo towards that Dragon. We'll see if Cloud9 just starts it up immediately.
Dragon spawning right now. Blabber and Fudge. Those are your two big go buttons on C9. FlyQuest trying to be careful about how they approach. Jojo Pion dropping down that seismic shove, forcing Whippo to pop the slice early. Won't get the dice since he didn't find a target. Good wall. Weaver's wall to get rid of everybody else, and Blabber's gonna claim the Drake before FlyQuest can say anything about it. But the damage on Jojo is huge. Jensen ends up getting the kill, and now C9's gotta be careful. Berserker waiting in the tri brush. Whippo doesn't want to face check it. FlyQuest are just gonna march as five back up towards mid and back up towards the Baron. Yeah, they could even go to Baron. We'll see if they actually do have the confidence to start it up. They're at least gonna push for this tier one mid, so they're not gonna go for that. Baron. Cloud9, good job securing this, but a good job as well from Whippo getting it onto Jojo, taking him down. Cloud9 on the other side, we're trying to burst down Inspire, but he had a nice flash over that Weaver's Wall to avoid the cast coming out there from Fudge that would have spelled his death. All right, FlyQuest getting some more money for themselves, getting some uh, tower gold as well on top of the kill gold. Let's take another look at how it started out. Because the wall was good from Jojo, but keep your eyes on Jojo back here as Whippo goes to the side. Nice little job there. He goes into the brush from the side uh, of the red wall here. And then, surprise, Crocodile in the brush right behind you lands the stun and deletes that mid laner. That's another one where it looks funny watching it with God mode where we can see yeah. everything. But if you watch that from Fog, he doesn't see him going to that brush. He has right. no idea that he's right beside him because of intelligent pathing there from Whippo. And that's something that maybe we could actually see from them on the desk. They could highlight that. Because uh, those are those plays that are so subtle, but are really, really impressive. Knowing the limits of that vision, taking the maximum advantage of it, JoJo gets com completely caught off guard. Metal Gear Renekton completes his objective, and JoJo is now 0-3-0 and zero on the Talia this game. Yeah, he's had a couple good placements with things like the walls, but it's definitely not the performance that you'd want to see. No, not at all. And I mean, if you get isolated and stunned up, it's actually so devastating because it sets up for the severing bull from Huey so easily. And when yeah. you have that ISO damage, it is a huge amount of damage that can actually come from very far away. Let's check how much it is right now, just for, just for fun. Severing Bolt currently does 838 damage if you are isolated or locked down. And that's before not. item procs, runes, etc. He has yeah, airy, not pretty. Uh, he has items that can proc, so yeah. Um, look at Blabber's, or look at uh, Berserker's gold as well. Uh, he's he's looking pretty rich still here on Cloud9. This, this is definitely something that they need to utilize. I mean, they have not gotten a good Callista fight since the lane stages. The lane stages, really good for them. They're able to get a nice lead, but they haven't been able to do much with here. And he does have a big bounty on his head. Meanwhile, another attempt here, inspired looking for one of these side lane plays, but uh, Berserker's got a big bounty on his head too. So uh, by the same token, if FlyQuest can actually focus on him and get that kill, Lapper getting pretty aggro here, trying to contest for that Gromp. C9 gonna work together with him to steal away the enemy blue buff from FlyQuest, get that team-wide bonus for everybody as the four-man squad continues their invade of this blue side jungle for Fly. They'll steal away even the wolf cam next. Blabber going in for the Vault Breaker. Flash, they'll burst down Inspired. They'll take him out. And Berserker's in a rampage. C9 got a 5v4 for the next 35 seconds. Nicely done there by Cloud9. And now with the jungler dead, for sure they're going to go to Baron. Inspired playing with fire. He was dancing so close while Jensen was taking the tier one top. He didn't need to be that close. Gets caught by the Q flash from Blabber. They're not even going to start it up. I'm actually really surprised. I guess they're too worried about the AOE from Jensen and from Busio. But and, that's and a lot to spend. Jensen there. also just cleared the top tower while yeah. that pick was happening. So he pushed the wave all the way on top side up to secondary tower here for Jojo. So this this way getting very rich. Solo tower gold now for Jensen as well. Um, I mean, they, they open up the map even a lot more on that side too. It's just, I think it's just too dangerous to, to pin yourselves in t inside this Baron pit. But then the, the thing becomes that that was a wasted flash basically from Blabber. Like you got 300 gold, 300 gold is not worth it for your flash when soul is on the table here in a minute, right? Like that is actually problematic. You know, if you're not going to be able to get a follow-up objective, it's just a trade. It is really not worthwhile. That's why I keep complimenting FlyQuest for how calm they are in this game. You can see during that, even while the pick is happening, Jensen just keeps on split pushing top. He gets the objective. So, okay, yeah, they gave up the golden uh, in jungle, but they did get that outer tower. And now he's got two needlessly large rods. He's looking for his death cap. 
that uh, that three items power spike for Jensen for Hui is going to be massive. Berserker does have his Terminus now, though, so he does have his three items. Whippo going to get jumped on here with the very start, but Fudge is stunned up. Cast goes out, but it doesn't get much. Fudge at about half HP. Whippo's even lower. Sterix keeps him going. As Inspire still looking for the angle. A big kick ends up hitting three. Vulcan pop first as Jensen goes on a killing spree and Blabber's about to drop. Berserker tries to get away, but Jensen's painting their blood all over the floor. The as Berserker falls, Fudge tries to run, but the big man ain't going nowhere. Shut down over to Inspired, Soul over to FlyQuest. Fight for FlyQuest. FlyQuest team fighting there was just beautiful, spacing out Berserker, not allowing him into the fight, not allowing him to get anything done whatsoever. This range advantage is just the biggest thing for FlyQuest. Massive. They're going to get all the kills, plus the soul, plus the Baron. That's that's wrapping up the game right there. They just grabbed everything off the table, Flowers. Absolutely everything except Jojo, but they've already killed him three times this game, they've already so had that. they're not even too worried about that. Baron about to drop. C9 have been in a gold lead the entire game, but when the pendulum swings, it swings hard, and FlyQuest are now the ones calling the shots. All right, so while we're watching this, just remember that this way damage is going to be magnified by a completed death cap after this fight. Uh, ultimate knocks him out of the fight initially, and then they all turn on Whippo, but he survives on the Renekton uh, with his Steric's Gage. Yeah, Berserker is just having so much trouble actually getting in and autoing. As soon as he gets a target that he can hit, Whippo, Whippo starts backing off. The poke starts landing on him. There's Way poke being thrown at him. There's Busio poke being thrown Whee! at him. Senna steps forward as well, outranging him there. It's so difficult for him to actually make use of this Rage Blade, stack it up, get something done. FlyQuest just play that out so well, so patient through these minutes where Cloud9 had this big early game lead. Now you've got the range advantage with an Ocean Soul. So you have the sustain advantage there. Easy, easy to proc it. The Siege here, complemented by the Baron buff from FlyQuest is gonna- a Buying time for that bailout to expire. Uh, FlyQuest just really playing towards their win conditions here, not getting rattled under pressure whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's something with Lee Sin where he's a much more flexible champion than everyone always just trying to insect people. But when you've got range advantage, peeling and, and using it straight forward are quite nice. And now FlyQuest rotate right on back over to Whippo where they have another minion wave at tower. Yeah, FlyQuest have really built this lead up now as they try to get the engage on the Whippo. He gets himself away for now, but the hostile takeover flew out. Berserker's already got the first kill on the Croc. Now they're going to jump in for Busio. They'll look for him too. Inspire with a nice kickback on the Jojo, but it ain't going to matter. Inspire drops next. C9 just got three, and they're about to make it four. Masu tries to kite him out, but Blabber and Berserker oh. are in hot pursuit. You wanted to see a Callista fight? There's your Callista fight. How much can they get, though? There's only the one cannon minion they could try to tank for. They're rushing down mid, so they at least want to try to get this inhibitor. Jensen could maybe actually snipe it out with a severing bolt or something. Kill that one minion would mean a lot here. Sever protect the, the president. <laughs> they they protect him from the, <laughs> the fissure. Get it's, down, Mr. Cannon. <laughs> They're still going to be able to continue the push here, though. It's, ooh, good Whoa. flash from Jensen. Death timers too short, obviously, to go for an end, but they will get an inhibitor for their troubles. We are getting a good game one, boys. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's the difference between getting that engaged and the, the all-in of this shorter range but high explosive damage team. Let's take a look at how they actually got it this time. So everybody's rotating back over to the minion wave that Blippo had up at tower. Then Blabber just goes for the closest person, ults Blippo while he's under tower, and then is able to get the Q to baby bump him back in for another tower shot. And this ulti from Jojo, locking them in, setting up for the hostile takeover from Vulcan, to me, that was really the defining moment of the fight. It makes it so there's no recourse for FlyQuest. You're locked in, you can't go forward into the hostile takeover, you can't escape over the Weaver's wall. That was really well positioned, really well executed. Cloud9 saw their moment, they immediately pounced on it. That's what it's gonna take for them to find a way back into this game. FlyQuest still with a gold lead, but it's so minuscule at this point, it pretty much does not matter. They've still got that soul. And the thing that I'm looking at most right now is how synchronized these clocks are in mm -hmm. the top corners of the screen. It's two minutes until Elder. It's 2.15 until Baron. This game's going to become very chaotic very soon. The soul is really, really powerful, but you know what doesn't really care about soul <laughs> is Elder. So if you can get that, everything else is kind of off the table. 
It would be pretty much lights out, I think, for sure, if FlyQuest gets it, because they have so many ways to apply it and so much poke. But if Cloud9 gets it, likewise, hey, could, yeah. be, could be tough. An execute for your burst damage seems nice as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, though, because Inspired's going on a long trip into enemy Very territory. Fun, that Lee Sin is trying to get behind mid lane, but the minions are coming up soon. Yeah, if Inspired can Dojo get has an no angle, TV, that would by the way. Big, but yeah, FlyQuest not going to get that angle they were looking for. Fudge pushed back by the presence of Inspired here, trying to create space for the team. Blabber and Fudge both going forward. Weaver's wall comes out, but it doesn't weave a whole lot. He got knocked off Blabber trying to get away. Yes, Whippo has managed to find Jojo, and he's looking to solo him out before the rest of the fight even starts. Dawning Shadow over the top. Jojo is low. They're going to grab him, and Jensen's taking the kill. FlyQuest is finding some health bars, and Inspired is chasing him down. Blabber's going to die next, and there goes Vulcan. Berserker will fight for his life here in the jungle, but another severing bolt is going to take him so close to death's door. Fudge gets jumped on. The bolt gets sidestepped. Fudge and Berserker both still staying alive for now. As oh! Inspired gets picked off. Big play coming out from Fudge, but he'll pay for it with his life. Berserker's trying to just thin the waves, do whatever he can. It ain't gonna matter. The grasping maw pulls him down. We gotta get the replay of Whippo catching JoJo off the Talia wall. He was in the middle of the jungle between the team and where JoJo was trying to rotate from. Exactly. Look at this, look at this. He's in here waiting for him. Another surprise, Crocodile! That was so insanely well done. They knew JoJo had no TP. The only way he joins the team is with the ult. So he drops a pink ward, plays off vision, lays a trap, and finds him on the ulti. Fly Quest have been inside JoJo's head, one step ahead of JoJo the entire game, constantly camping him. Elder. Whippo especially. Multiple assassinations on the Cloud9 mid laner. And Elder's under fire. Now it's a send everything in there. You know, Blabber just trying to try and get a steal. Q over when it gets low and hope for the best. Well, FlyQuest has to take this pretty slow because they're still waiting on Inspired to get back with the rest of the team and have their own smite there. That's going to give Cloud9 no time flash. to get everybody in there as well. All right, FlyQuest, now they've got Inspired. Now they're ready to burn it a little bit faster if they need to. Elder at half HP. C9 still looking for an angle. Blabber has a blast cone ready to fly over the wall if he needs it, but now there's no more blast cone, so he's gonna have to use his vault breaker. Fudge at about one third HP, still looking on the approach here. There's a Renata ulti over the wall, but the Dawning Shadows wouldn't respond. They've got the Elder, and they've got Jojo yet again. Jensen now dominating as FlyQuest continue the chase. Busio's ready to lock them down with the slows, and Berserker is executed with the power of the Drake. Blabber and Vulcan aren't long for this world, and FlyQuest are on the victory march. Busio goes up into the top lane just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure this one's all wrapped up. 40 seconds on the death timers, and only a big man with a barrel standing between FlyQuest and the Nexus. FlyQuest, such intelligent play, so calm through this game, and it's only Fudge that stands between them and a game one victory. He'll clear out the wave for now. Next wave's coming up. The barrel's cooking. It doesn't cook for long enough. It only gets one little minion. Now the teleport's showing up just to guarantee this does not stop here. Inspired keeping Fudge pushed all the way back into the fountain. Fly Quest weather the storm and come out on top in game one. Now, Inspired's Lee Sin didn't have the best scoreline on this team, but was so instrumental in so many of these Fly Quest plays. Yep. Jensen goes deathless in this game, playing the Huey mid playing around the flash cooldowns. Absolutely impressive game one from FlyQuest. I also have to say, man, Whippo's game IQ is just off the charts. Like the intelligence he showed in this game of where to position. It's not mechanics, it's plays that you could press the buttons, but you wouldn't think to be in that spot at that time and right. execute it in that way. When he sneaks around the red buff brush to get Jojo off by that one dragon, when he's lying in wait for the Weaver's wall on a pink, knowing exactly the path that Jojo would have to take ulting back to the team, those are two such incredibly high IQ League of Legends plays that it's just beautiful to watch someone straight up outthink their opponents in that way. And he stole the Drake at 31 HP. <laughs> I say that kind of jokingly, but it also warped the way that the mid game played Get out. Get you yeah. a Whippo who can do it all. Yeah. Absolutely. But before we head back to the lounge, it's time to take a look at our LCS Connected Comms replay.